Welcome to Thought for the Day with the Sutton team on Wednesday the 24th of February. Today John is interviewing Miriam. We heard a little about her last week and today we shall discover if there's anything more we can learn from her life than just the rescue of her baby brother from the River Nile. We read about Miriam in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Micah. So over to John in the studio where he will interview Miriam using the amazingly advanced technology we imagine might be developed. We imagine she appears as some sort of hologram so that we can see her and hear her. Good day to you all. I have with me today Miriam, daughter of Amram and Jochebed and older sister of Aaron and Moses. Miriam is recognised as a prophetess of the Lord God and a devoted servant of God's. Well, most of the time, but we'll ask Miriam about that later. Welcome to life in the 21st century, Miriam. Please tell us a little about yourself. I was the oldest in my family. After me came Aaron and then baby Moses. My family was very important to me. I never got married or had children, so I devoted my life to serving God and assisting my brothers as they served God. I loved music and dancing, as many girls and ladies do. I wasn't perfect by any means, but then no human is. We can all make mistakes. Let's start with a part in the rescue of baby Moses, when the Egyptian pharaoh had ordered all Hebrew baby boys to be drowned in the Nile at birth. How did this come about? I loved my little baby Moses and I was devastated when I heard that all baby boys had to be drowned at birth. At first I helped my mother care for the baby and keep him hidden, but he was a baby and cried a lot. We were terrified that he would be heard, so my mother and I put him in a watertight basket at the edge of the River Nile in the reeds. Although I was only a child myself, I offered to stay close by and keep an eye on him. I was rather frightened in case I was found, but I believe God was with me and kept me safe as I patiently watched and waited. When the Pharaoh's daughter and her maids came by to bathe in the river, I held my breath. They were so near the hidden basket. And then the princess spotted the basket, asked her maid to take it out of the river and water opened it. My heart was beating like mad and I held my breath. The baby began to cry. Fortunately, she loved babies and she decided to keep him as her son. She gave him the name Moses because she had drawn him out of the water. Suddenly God gave me the courage to speak and I offered to fetch a Hebrew woman to nurse him. She agreed with that and so we had little Moses at home with us for about three years before he had to go back to live in the palace. I think that during that three years Aaron and Moses and I built up a close relationship with each other. We stayed th close throughout our lives, though there were a few instances when we fell out, just as happens in many families, I suspect. We read in the Bible that you played a big part in God's plan to take the Hebrews out of slavery in Egypt alongside your brothers. In Micah chapter 6 verse 4, God says to the Israelites, I brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you and also Aaron and Miriam. That is surprising. Usually we think of men as the only leaders in your time. But God clearly doesn't think like that. He can use any person according to the gifts he has bestowed on them to use in his service. You told us that you enjoyed music and dancing. Can you tell us more about that? Oh yes. Pharaoh had changed his mind about letting us leave 
and he sent his army after us to pursue us and take us back to Egypt. There were thousands of us just walking together and they had horses and chariots and they were gaining on us rapidly. We reached the Red Sea and couldn't go any further. We thought we were doomed. But we should have known that God wouldn't abandon us like that. He told Moses what to do. The sea parted and we were able to cross on dry land. Then the sea closed over the Egyptian army and we were saved. We watched in utter amazement. We were overjoyed and we celebrated spontaneously with great joy. Moses and I sang a song of praise and rejoicing in God who looks after us and keeps us safe according to his plan for us. For me, I went further. I picked up my tambourine and started to sing and dance. Singing and dancing was always a way of expressing my feelings, especially my faith in God and in his mighty power. All the Hebrew women felt the same as me. They joined in with their tambourines and together we danced and sang in relief and praise. I remember it well. I sang, sing to the Lord, for he is mightily exalted. The horse and his rider he has hurled into the sea. That's very interesting. We enjoy music, particularly singing, here in the 21st century. Our music would sound different to you. In fact, we have many different forms of music that we use to worship God and express our feelings about him. Some people prefer bands with guitars, other stringed instruments, woodwind, brass instruments and percussion. Some people prefer keyboard music. The organ is a very old keyboard instrument and has been used for centuries. But there are also modern electric keyboard instruments. And the songs we sing are different from what you would sing. Furious adaptations of Psalms and other passages from the Bible which came after your time hymns and more modern music songs. Yes, those of us who know God enjoy singing his praise in various forms of music, men and women alike. At the moment we are battling a pandemic caused by a serious virus infecting millions of people throughout the world. And of one of the things we really miss is singing our songs of worship and praise with each other in our places of worship. So we understand your need to express your joy and praise to God when he delivered you from slavery from Egypt. But to change the subject, you told us earlier that you did make mistakes in your life. For our listeners, we read about the big mistake Miriam made in Numbers chapter 12 verses 1 to 15. In your own words, could you tell us about that? Oh yes. Sometimes we can get carried away by our own interpretation of a situation. We can feel that we are more important than we are. It seemed to Aaron and I that Moses had made a great mistake in his choice of wife. And we were not backwards in letting others know what we thought about it. We reasoned that God had called all three of us to be prophets, to be his, his mouthpieces. So didn't we have a right to express our opinion in this matter? Then God stepped in. He called all three of us together to deal with the issue. God told us that he used visions and dreams to speak to his prophets, to speak to his faithful people. But Moses was different. He spoke to Moses face to face and quite clearly. God was angry with Aaron and I for ganging up against Moses and thinking we were equal with our brother in God's plan. He punished me severely with disease. Fortunately, Moses spoke to God asking him to heal me, so my punishment ended after seven days and I had learnt my lesson. God forgave me and I had a long life, although, like Moses and Aaron, I never got to see or enter 
the land that God had promised to his people. Thank you for being honest with us, Miriam. None of us is perfect. We all seem to let wrong ideas, thoughts and actions enter our lives and we presume to think that we are right in God's eyes. Fortunately, we can bring these transgressions to God in prayer and ask for his forgiveness when we realise our sin. It has been interesting to learn about your life, Miriam, and the wisdom that you can pass on from your experiences. We thank you for joining our interview with Miriam today. We now turn to God in prayer. For our prayers today, I'm using the words of worship hymns, some of which you may be familiar with and some which may be new to you, but all were written to be sung. When we sing, we can be more aware of the tunes than the words, so our prayers today focus on the words we sing. We think of the times this week that we have been guided by our own desires and will, so we start with a hymn of confession and faith in God's forgiveness. Forgive our sins as we forgive, you taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and bid resentment cease. Then, bound to all in bonds of love, our lives will spread your peace. Amen. Amen. As forgiven children of God, we offer him our praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who, like me, his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting King. Amen. Amen. God has provided a wonderful world for humankind to live in, but we have tainted and spoilt it with our thoughtlessness and selfishness. As we battle with COVID-19 and all the ways we have polluted and spoiled the world, so we pray. For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord, for a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords. To a life of love in action, help us rise and pledge your word. Lead us, Father, into freedom, from despair your world release, that, redeemed from war and hatred, all may come and go in peace. Show us how, through care and goodness, Fear will die and hope increase. All that kills abundant living, let it from the earth be banned. Pride of status, race or schooling, dogmas that obscure your plan. In our common quest for justice, may we hallow life's brief span. You, Creator God, have written your great name on humankind. For our growing in your likeness, bring the life of Christ to mind, that by our response and service, earth its destiny may find. Amen. Amen. As we close our time of learning and prayer, let us bear in mind the great commission Jesus has given us. Forth in the peace of Christ we go. Christ to the world with joy we bring, Christ in our minds, Christ on our lips, Christ in our hearts, the world's true King. Priests of the world, Christ sends us forth this world of time to consecrate, our world of sin by grace to heal, Christ's world in Christ to recreate. We are his church. He makes us one. Here is one hearth for all to find. Here is one flock, 
one shepherd king. Here is one faith, one heart, one mind. Amen. Amen.